I guess this is, I'm assuming this is recent. I'm not too sure how recent this actual clip is, but um, I stumbled upon this clip thanks to the homeless cats for pointing me in the right direction. But concerning a fellow comedian, I guess, in the scene who decided to go on a bit of a tirade and basically call out Burt Kreischer for being a bit of a bad dude and not being a good guy and all this monarchy, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which is probably part of course in a standard procedure within the comedy scene and it? it seems there's a lot of infighting a lot of jealousy going on within the uh, people just being bitches in general and not really seeing um the situation or seeing you know success in the entertainment industry for what it is right just a matter of luck in some cases right it is basically a flip of a coin who it ends up being the person on a massive netflix poster somewhere you know on the broadway of la right is there's you know every i'd, I'd assume again Again, for me as I look at it, I'd assume most people work to you know work hard everyone works with a particular standard people do spots appearances they write a lot they record stuff um they record their set they go over what they did the previous day they tweak they hone um all that stuff you see on like a Mark Norman vlog I assume most comedians do that if that's the case then you know I would assume if you're like 10 years in and you're pretty decent at what you do and you've honed a craft, you've probably got a good hour under your belt or maybe a good 45 minutes. Um, it is really luck of the draw as to who becomes the next big thing, who gets opportunity to get a special, who gets opportunity to get a TV show, um, to sell out, you know, stand up gigs around the country. It doesn't necessarily mean that if one person is successful that it negates any i think in your journey and unfortunately this guy doesn't seem to understand this but he just and again picking on bert is probably the easiest one to pick on because you know his comedy is a little bit you know his comedy is great but his persona might make you think that he's a bit of a doofus when i don't think he is i think he kind of plays up that whole dumb dumb kind of jog dad persona but let's continue this is a clip of uh some comedian i don't know who his name is uh deciding to go on a rampage about burt kreischer regarding all the things that he hates about him so let's hear what he has to say <laughs> yeah i'm not a big burt fan oh here we go on my you? podcast so i awesome. listen yeah. so there's one episode to listen to from your podcast i i've had guys like i had norman on and burt not good you're he's been on my podcast so i That's awesome listen yeah. so there's one episode to listen to from your podcast i i've had guys like i had norman on and bert and all the fucking players for all you comedy fans they're all been on bert kreischer yeah did he do this <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm not a big bert fan yeah i know bert's a, it's bert's a cunt he's a, it's all marketing <laughs> i love this guy I was, yeah. just, I was I was hoping for the show. Like, like, what are you gonna do? Like, not let me open for you? <laughs> We're done. Your wife's a nice lady, but you're a fucking bitch. You're a terrible comic. You're not good. You're. And again, what what is that game, right? What is that game? Especially during this um, crazy times that we're going through at the moment, disparaging a fellow comic who's, you know, going through the process as you especially if you consider like the actual allegations here are what that he's a bad dude for doing what precisely not deciding to have him open for him because he's mentioned that in passing that probably is the, the the crux of the issue right i'm assuming he wasn't able to get a gig a guest spot or he wasn't able to go on the road with him or something along those kind of lines which is you know uh, a, a thing that I've always had an issue with like with people in general that only speak up about people whenever they kind of do them wrong but other than that they basically keep their mouth shut and just kind of you know go along with it because it's benefiting them and as soon as it doesn't benefit them they quit to kind of free under the bus I don't think that's fair whatsoever this picture of Bert is probably horrible as well by the way with his chain on with the, on the mic but hey um, that that I don't think is fair if you're going to call somebody out call them something call them out for an actual thing that they did right as opposed to just oh because they didn't help me out on my stand-up or they didn't give me the op option or the op opportunity to open for them on the road um doesn't make sense to me you're marketing it's all marketing 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 shirt off drinks blah 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 it's marketing marketing oh, you wake up every morning going oh how do i market this how do i market this that's it that's your life He's not a bad person, but he's marketing. I will say nothing wrong with that either. Being a boy and a good marketeer, like I've seen this a lot in even my world, the DJ world. There seems to be a little bit of a confusion as to like how people make it or get successful. Yes, there are those that exist who are purely, you know, 
successful due to their talent or their ability or their looks or whatever it may be but for the most part it is a lot especially in this era right especially with the advent of a smartphone everyone has the ability or the possibility or the option to be their own pr right to be their own marketeer to be their own social media manager why wouldn't you take the opportunity to do so and unfortunately if you do want to amplify your talent if you do want to be able to reach the masses you're going to have to have to embrace marketing to some level of point of view to some point right you're going to have to embrace it to kind of sit there and you know and hope that times go back to you know when david tell was blowing up and doing his thing that's not going to happen anymore you know that isn't going to exist if you want to be you know a stand-up comic of any sort of notoriety or have the option to you know work certain shows go certain places you're going to have to get your voice out there and i don't and i don't think you know the best person to basically learn it from if you're on the road would be a bird crusher right he's probably the best at marketing on social and don't get me wrong is it annoying to go in his profile sometime and see you know a million dots on his stories about him kind of trapezing all across the states and kind of around his friends and getting his big fat red face on camera and laughing and giggling and heezing everywhere yeah but it's pretty cool as well to see that he's always on always creating content always documenting stuff working on ideas writing you see the process kind of unfolding and then you kind of get a recap of the stories when he goes on a podcast it's quite cool to see that sort of thing and imagine if you're a stand-up comic and you actually are working within that industry and seeing a peer of yours you know blowing up on that platform precisely that should be encouraging especially when you think about how he blew up right the machine was a story that he didn't want to tell but he as he has he famously describes it that interaction he had with joe rogan he tells the story to joe rogan joe rogan says hey you should be telling this on stage he finally tells it on stage he gets recorded he puts it on he puts it on facebook i think that was due to his special as well right that didn't do too well he took a clip out he took the clip off from that special put it on facebook it blew up and then he suddenly becomes this massive massive star right far bigger star than he was prize selling out arenas or selling out stadiums no selling out arenas selling out comedy clubs right and then kind of building up from there onwards and now he's what doing these amazing car lot shows where he's essentially you know got hundreds of cars in the car lot and people honking their horn and hollering and watching him do stand up on a massive jumbotron when he's on stage like, that's pretty cool all from marketing so it's don't don't poo poo if you unless you've done it yourself say this about bert kreischer he has the machine story that is hilarious and he's not it. that not really if you look at he the machine story, it's not that good Christ. it's not that good hold on <laughs> let, me, let me get to my fucking point can you can you yes and for a half a second over here <laughs> and punt <laughs> and punt <laughs> oh i still have that on the board i just i just like that and punt no he has a, he has one story that's entertaining and funny he's milked that what's surprising about bert is that and what's wrong with milking a moment What's wrong with milking something that's going your way? What's wrong with trying to get the most out of what little attention you're finally getting in your career? What's the problem with that? Some of these comedians are very bizarre. I don't know how they expect to become successful if they don't want to market and they don't want to milk moments that happen in their career. Very odd. You can't get away from him. He's on everyone's podcast. He's on 3,000 podcasts that he hosts himself. He's constantly putting out content. I reviewed a show recently where he's... You can get away from him. You just stop following the, the places that he's on. If he's on a show that you like, you just skip that one. If you don't want to look at his face, you don't follow him on social. Like, that's one of the most bizarre things I've heard anyone say on comedy. Like, part of the reason why you want to be everywhere is so people don't forget your face, right? So they can... they You're kind of always living in, in their head rent-free. And it seems like, even though they're kind of denying that he's kind of, you know... um. Uh, his ability as a comic he's essentially occupied you know mind space uh for free for what just being himself in it eating peanut butter on a podcast which is by the way eating food on a podcast sucks eating peanut butter is the worst thing you could possibly eat the, and the guy's nasty the, one of the previous two bears one cave he's talking about eating his bogeys and stuff right i just skip i just fast forward or i just click x you know the little chrome tab there boop, and keep it moving and the next show i tune in again that's what you gotta do on a podcast and this is what he's putting out his content and somehow he's still very popular i cannot figure it out and that therein is the essence of the issue and you know like i said um in the previous show you know sometimes the worst do make it do succeed but also there is the case where i think even bert will be he would be he would admit it the most out of most people he says it uh, numerous times which i have a lot of respect for him about the process no about the um the role luck played in his career something people don't mention too often 
you know after we've gotten past the hard working bit after we've gotten past the you having the ability to do the said thing that you're doing right because a lot of people get into stuff especially in the creative in the arts where there is no barrier for entry right as long as you've got a passion and you want to do something you can basically do it no one's going to stop you from playing the guitar but once we get past your proficiency of playing it and whether or not you're good or not objectively and we get past your hard work most of the success in the entertainment industry does come down to luck it just does right um is, is he's lucky that he's what a comedian in this area he is lucky that maybe he was um you know on tv yeah with the travel channel he's lucky that he ended up being friends with joe rogan lucky that he's best friends with tom segura lucky that he you know decided to pursue his stand-up comedy career in la and not in new york there are all these things that are kind of you know went his way that you could deem as lucky but essentially you got to put yourself in the game to be lucky you got to allow yourself to be in a position where you can capitalize or take advantage of that luck when it comes your way but to suggest that he's somehow you know a freak of nature that he just got lucky that's why he's successful the only reason is really doing him a disservice and again that's kind of from me who's you know i can be a bit hot and cold with him right there's sometimes i'll listen to him speak especially when he's kind of going this whole self-deprecation thing when it comes to his drinking and all this sort of stuff that gets annoying but most of the time you can have to respect the hustle you have to respect his ability to continue creating continue kind of embarrassing himself and making himself the ridicule of the internet right subjecting himself to terrible comments on social media right being friends with ari alone should be a reward in itself um, of course, luck is going to play a, a, a root or an aspect in his success. Why, why would it, do, it would work in my success too? It should work in yours as well. I will tell you this now. I used to open for Bert. I'm a guy. I know him. I know him very well. I have his phone number. He's not fun to hang out with because he's just looking at his phone the whole time. Like the, oh, he's he's recording himself. Weak source. Is that what you're complaining about? He eats peanut butter on podcasts that you can tune out of. He didn't take you on a road um his machine story wasn't funny and he's on his phone when you're talking to him come on weak source we're looking at twitter so funny like that's what that. it is i'm sorry guys i i know you i'm i'm raining on your parade about the the machine no, and you, listen you're he's not, not a you're not raining on anyone's parade you're just making yourself look like an absolute loser imagine the one you're picking out to kind of you know pull up and say oh he's not that good at what he does is but imagine that's the one you're calling out of all the people to call out of all the people that you could accuse of being hacks, of all the people you could accuse of essentially using stand-up comedy in order to get, you know, a better position or to, in order to kind of rewrite the narrative of their career or people that are basically disrespecting the craft, right? Of all the people you can call out, this is the guy you want to call out. It says more about you than it does about him, really. Not a bad per he's not a bad guy. He's not. But he's a fucking narcissist who wants to be famous that's all he wants to be well it's duh isn't that isn't that like the description of all stand-up comedians or everyone working in the hollywood industry isn't that, that that's it isn't it that's describing everybody comedy he doesn't care about the comedy vehicle to get you there he pretends he does but he doesn't because david tell is the best comedian of all time agreed he is yep and for me like i'm like i'm team mattel burt kreischer is just marketing he just wants to be famous so so you're comparing Burt Crash with David Tell. No one's going to stack up well against David Tell. Even flipping Dave Chappelle wouldn't. No one will. That's a pretty uh, poor equivalency there. Fuck Burt. If this ruins my <laughs> career, I'm fine. I'm good. I, 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 I did very well. I love this podcast. Yeah. You can tell you did very well that you're complaining about what... When did this happen? I bet this happened like ages ago as well. He's doing so well that he's complaining about a slight, um, you know... And, and again, I bet you this is something that he's only perceiving in his own head too. I bet you this happens a lot to people, isn't it? Where you perceive a slight in your own mind, you work it up into such an issue, right? That it sort of kind of outstrips what is actually happened on the day. I bet you that's a thing. <laughs> this is great. I love it. Yeah, uh... Bert, fuck him. Con he's a cunt. Kreischer, done. Fair enough, isn't it? I guess, isn't it? I guess he has to keep that same energy when he does see the guy in real life. But again, like I said, man, I, I think this sort of, that kind of loser energy isn't something that I would ever condone. I think in fairness, whether it comes to, whether it's even to Brendan Schaub's or his world, whoever they are, right? It's fun to kind of poke fun at these kind of people. But hey, if they find a way to be successful in a lane or in an arena that they kind of, you know, um, get some sort of joy out of and fans enjoy what they do, that's what matters at the end of the day. If you're a comedian within that circle and you're wondering how they did it, maybe there's some things to learn about their approach. 
their work ethic, um, their marketing abilities, um, who they align themselves with, their network, all this sort of things and that you can maybe apply in your own career. And if not, just ignore it. I don't understand people just not being able to ignore things that they don't like. It really is, especially with COVID, especially with COVID, right? If ever there was a time for you to kind of recalibrate and think, you know what, what do I really want to be doing in my life? What do I really want to be spending my time on? This should be it. This should be the time where you should be like, you know what? I shouldn't be worried about the next man. I shouldn't be worried about what they're doing over there. I shouldn't be worried about this missed opportunity or this perceived slight that was done to me. I should be concentrating on my craft and making sure that I'm the best at what I do so that when a chance comes along my way, when luck does kind of, you know, shine down on me, right? I can take advantage of it as opposed to poking holes in what others are doing because it makes you feel better. Nah, I'm not with that whatsoever. I'm not with that whatsoever.